Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my animal weapon overview and thoughts. Maybe thoughts. I might need a whole nother video for thoughts on this one. That being said, I'm going to do this video sort of live, sort of edited. I'm going to take you to each of the places so I can physically show you where everything is, what NPCs you need to talk to for what, and hopefully clear up any of the confusion. Because after 12 hours of this today, I can tell you there are quite a few questions that I answered over and over again. And no hard feelings to those of you who asked me. I understand you didn't know everyone else was asking. It's cool. But anyway, let's start with where the new Animal Weapon questline starts. I believe you need to finish Heaven's Ward's 3.0 main story mission before you get to this point. Now, the first quest you'll want is from Rowena here in Idleshire. She's just chilling right here by the tent, right here on the minimap. And once you get your quest from her, the weapon quest line kicks off immediately. You're going to be doing stuff within two or three minutes of accepting this quest line. So let's go to the next part. Let's try not to have any more of those awkward transitions. That was really bad for me. Anyway, after Rowena, she will send you to Azisla, where you can talk to the NPC, Artisher, who will allow you to hand in a quest and officially begin the Animal Weapon questline. Artisher will then immediately give you another quest, which will take you to Mordona. For reference on which of the quests is actually the first quest, the one you'll be looking at is Soul Without Life. Couldn't be a more accurate first name for this quest, could it? Once you accept that quest, and you'll need to accept this quest on the job you want to progress on. So, if you talk to this NPC as a ninja, or if you talk to them as a monk, it'll give you your ninja or your monk weapon. Um, and on top of that, you can only progress on one job with this quest at a time. Upon completing it, however, the quest immediately becomes available again, and you can accept it on another level 60 job. So theoretically, you could be working on step one of one of your anima weapons at the same time you're working on step two of one at the same time you're working on step three. But that'll make a lot more sense when we get a little bit later into the video. Now, once you're in Mordona, you're going to have to speak to Rowena real quick over there before going up these stairs on the left, going up top here, and talking to an NPC called Sindona. I probably pronounced it wrong, but we'll find out in about two seconds. Here's the NPC over here. Nope, I was a uh, Sindoni. My bad. Now, this is a part that's been confusing a lot of people because there is a visual bug. Now, Sindoni is actually the NPC you need for one of the several quests that you're going to accept. Now, when you actually right-click her name, she gives you a few options here. Now, these options only become available after you've actually spoken to her the first time. Awkwardly enough, it sends people back to Geralt with a quest completed icon when your quest isn't actually completed until you've obtained two nodules from this NPC, an astral and an umbral nodule. Now, there are two ways of getting these nodules. One is to offer up a Zodiac Weapon Zeta. Those of you who finished the weapon before, this is basically your first step skip. You do not have to do the Luminous Crystals aspect of this quest if you have a Zeta for this part. Now, if you're wondering, oh, should I do a Zeta first? It'll take less time for you to get the Luminous Crystals on its own if you have no progress on the Relic. If you are on your Zodiac or really close to your Zeta, I actually recommend you finish it because those final steps for the Zodiac and Zodiac Zeta have really been nerfed into the ground. And I think you'll find that they're a pretty easy time over doing the next part. If you don't have a Zeta, you instead need to offer her Luminous Crystals. Now, Luminous Crystals basically act as the new Atmas. Calm down. They're pretty much equivalent to the 2.3 drop rates for Atmas, which are close to 5 to 10%. Although, of course, outliers happen. RNG is RNG, especially over 18 drops. Now, you need three from each of the six new zones in Heaven's Ward. So it'll give you a list on the quest itself, and you just have to follow those until you have three from each zone. Once you actually have the three from each zone, you come back to Sindoni and hand in those luminous crystals to get the astral and umbral nodules. Now that we've done the part where we actually talk to Sindoni, we can actually go and do our fate farming. Now, I want to clear up a few things as I'm actually going to farm some of these fates. One, even though I said that you're accepting the quest for a specific job, you do not need to be on that job in order to gain Luminous Crystals. For this reason, it's pretty efficient to take this time to, while you're fate grinding to actually level your other jobs. For example, Corthus Western Highlands, maybe you hop on a level 50 job and while you're farming your Luminous Crystals there, you get a couple of levels. Remember, a lot of this fate experience did get buffed a while back, so having so many people doing it definitely makes it a super viable leveling option while also working on your Relic Weapon. Just trying to make sure you're killing two birds with one stone here. But as we're flying around, we're basically just going to be killing these fates until we get three Luminous Crystals in the zone. For the sake of this video, I'll hopefully only have to do one Luminous Crystal, if that much. Now while I'm killing this fate, I also thought of another tip. 
Some of the lower level ones require you to level sync quite often. If you make a macro by just typing in and make a macro that just types in slash level sync, then that'll work for level syncing for all of your, your fates. And on top of that, it also helps to do the fates on a lower level so that you don't have to level sync. Especially because a lot of the quests, exactly like the one I just did and didn't get a crystal on, uh, actually have enemies that spawn outside of the initial range of the fate. So, if you're not level synced, it makes it really, really annoying to try and get those enemies and kill them because you're, you know, it won't let you attack them because you're a higher level. So definitely doing them, doing the fates on jobs that are close to the appropriate level helps alleviate this issue as well. Another question that I actually thought that I get quite often is, do I need an old relic to do this quest? And while I've answered this in a lot of other videos, no, you don't need the old level 50 relic to do this quest. And specifically, the question I get, uh, no, you don't need to be wearing the old relic zenith, no form of it, while doing these fates. You can, like I said, be doing these fates on any class regardless, so you don't need a relic for it. Just felt I should take some time to clarify it. And let's hope I actually get my drop from the spinner rip. Alright, let's see if we can get a luminous crystal so I can show you guys what the pop-up actually looks like for it. There we go. Luminous Fire Crystal, so when you get one in your inventory, it's going to pop up on the screen right like that. And remember, you need to collect three of those per zone, and they will... they take up a regular inventory space, or do I just get them? Might as well answer that question right here. They're probably somewhere mixed around in all of this garbage. Oh, there it is. Luminous Fire Crystal. So yes, they will take up inventory spaces, so... Um, Definitely be sure to make sure you don't have full inventory. So after getting your 18 Luminous Crystals or handing in your Zeta to Sindoni in Mordona, remember you have to get the item from that NPC at the upper level of Mordona. After you get the nodules, you come back here and you trade them to Ardashir in order to finish your first quest. By finishing this first quest, you will be rewarded by an animated copy of the Esoterics weapon, which is item level 170. So, I do highly recommend this for somewhat new players at level 60, if you can stay in the grind, because it'll go from I-170 to I-200 pretty quick from this point on. After finishing that first quest, it becomes a repeatable from this NPC, so you can complete it as many times as you want for as many different jobs as you want. The second quest is called Toughening Up, and I don't even really have to tell you much about it. All you have to know is that with that weapon equipped, with that new I-170 weapon equipped, you have to do a total of 10 dungeons. Basically, look in your party list, start from Snowcloak, and go down. These will be the first six dungeons you can do. Now, thankfully, by going over to your Duty Finder options, you can actually do these first six dungeons undersized, which means you can do them with a party of four level 60s and basically complete them in anywhere from four to six minutes, depending on what your kill speeds are looking like. However, once you get to the seventh dungeon, it will actually be Dusk Vigil, Samal, the Airy, ending with the vault and these cannot be undersized so if you put together a party of two tanks of dps and a healer from the beginning to the end this could take you anywhere from two to two and a half hours and is by far the easiest step of the entire anima quest line this is the part where it definitely is still worth it to be doing this quest it's the next part that some people have some problems so after completing those 10 dungeons and going back and handing in that quest, you'll come to the final step for this first part of the Animal Weapon questline. Almost done, right? Like it was nothing. This final step will give you your finished I-210 weapon and will completely change the name and the model of the weapon. For example, here is the Monk weapon on my Lalafell. We'll zoom in real quick. There you go. Nice little preview of the weapon right there. As opposed to my Awoken Fists, which I can show you right here as well, which basically look like a much cooler model of the Esoterics weapon. And most of the weapons have this sort of mysterious glow around it, what looks like energy flowing around the weapon, although some of them can be different colors. It's a pretty nice looking weapon, but I hope that we get a replica of it at some point because I like the way it looks better than the new Anima weapon anyway. Anyway, moving on from that, this final quest is the one where everybody is really, really not happy. It is an extremely long grind to get this finished quest done, and when I pull up the Reddit page in a second, you'll understand why. So now that you've accepted the third quest, you'll be sent to this NPC in Mordona, Christiana. Upon talking to them, they'll 
again, do that same thing that happened with the first quest where they'll talk to you and then you'll get like a finished quest icon. Ignore the finished quest icon because trust me, you're far from done with this one. Talk to her after the little quest symbol disappears above her head and she will talk to you about animal weapon materials. When you talk to her further, you will notice that she has four items you can trade in for. One enchanted rubber, one fast drying carbon coat, one divine water, and one fact, uh, fact, fast acting Allegan catalyst. Now in order to get these items, you need 20 unidentifiable bones, shells, ores, and seeds, and four Adam, HQ adamantite Francesca's titanium alloy mirrors, dispelling arrows, and king cake. You're probably wondering, how do I get these items, Mr. Happy? Now we'll pull up the Reddit page, and this is where your nightmares begin. And here we are to the official Reddit guide for the Animal Weapon questline. Kudos to that smudge guy for making the post, and kudos to the Reddit community for contributing to it to make sure it's full of adequate tips and information. This covers the first couple of steps that we talked about, including the order of the dungeons in case my description of it was too vague for you. But the quest we're looking at is coming into its own, the NPC that I just showed you. And here you go again, Enchanted Rubber, the Carbon Coat, the Water, and the Allegan Catalyst, as well as the items needed. Below, it explains the various numbers of ways in order to get these items, those of which I'll show you where the NPCs are in case you're wondering. Now, with that out of the way, in order to get unidentifiable bones or shells, you can either buy them with 680 Poetics, use the Emulja Vendor using 13 Emulja Tokens, or the Sahagan Vendor with 13 Sahagan Tokens, Keep in mind that these Beast Tribe tokens can only be gotten from the Rank 3 Beast Tribe quests. So if you do not have those ranks available, this is not a viable option. Unless you want to start grinding those out now. And to be honest, I don't know that I recommend that. You can also do Alexander Normal, getting 10 Precision Gordian Bolts from A1 for the Bone, or 10 Precision Gordian Lens from A2. That means 10 kills equals 1 unidentifiable item. You can also trade in 1,000 allied seals, which, yes, are the hunt seals from the Old World content, or a Heaven's Word treasure map. And, of course, if you don't have the rep for the other Beast Tribe quests, you can always do the Vanu Beast Tribe quests regardless of rank, but you'll need 18 tokens instead of 13. Now, for the unidentifiable ores and seeds, instead of Poetics, it is 680 Law, and the Cobalt and Silk Vendors fill in the other slots. A3 and A4 fill in for the ore and seed respectively, as well as still having an odds to get them from the treasure maps that you get in the Heaven's Ward areas, as well as Allied Seals and the Vanu Vendors. If we were to put this into perspective, it makes it sound a lot worse than it really is. For example, only doing Alexander while also trading in Law Tombstones whenever viable nets you 616 Alexander normal kills split across, uh, sp split across a 1, 2, 3, and 4, depending on how many you need for each one, um, while also spending the law, yes, yeah, 616 Alexander normal kills. You could also get about 54,000 combined Poetics and Law, about 27,000 each, or 1,040 Beast Tribe quests. The treasure maps also can drop them, which can save you some time, so if you have a Gatherer, I highly recommend doing that, but I've tested the drop rates and they seem to be about 5% on getting one of these items. You also have to keep in mind that the items drop to the entire party. So unless you're doing the solo maps, make sure you're doing them with people you trust, lest you get ninja for one of your animal weapon items. Also, allied seals, if you're going to do the hunt, you'll get law and hunt seals from it as well. What I mostly recommend doing for this part of the quest is to not focus on any one single piece of content, unless of course you wish to focus on grinding one thing. And if I had to recommend grinding one thing, it would be Alexander Normal. With pre-made groups, A4 can take anywhere from 3 to 4 minutes, A1 about 4 to 5 minutes, A2 about 7 minutes, and A3 about the same. So, it adds up over time, but it's better than trying to grind out law and poetics in any other way. If you want to take it at a more casual pace, do your roulettes. Maybe do some Alexander runs every day. Uh, do some Beast Tribe dailies. Make sure you're getting your daily map, and if you ever see a hunt, might as well go out of your way to do it. With that in mind, it'll still take quite some time in order to get it done. At about 3 or 4 hours, you could probably expect it to take several weeks, if not a month or more. Somebody even said it was 68 days to get it done, but that seemed a little bit excessive to me. Overall, it's something that you should approach casually, and not hardcore grind like I did in order to do the first however much I've gotten done of it so far. It will definitely burn you out a lot more than just taking it at a standard pace, which I'll state my opinions about in a later video. I definitely think this one's running on too long to also do a thoughts part about it, because I have a whole lot more to say. Now, on top of needing those items, you also need some high quality crafted items. 
You'll need four of each of them, and they are indeed specialist recipes, one-star specialist recipes. Now, at least each one of these has at least one item that is gotten from the diadem, but of course, you could just spend gil on it. This is probably going to be the tougher part for a lot of people, since these items are definitely going to be selling high on the market boards, at least for the first week or so. I do expect them to die down quite a bit, but if you don't have any crafter or gatherer friends, it's about time maybe that you picked one up, at least maybe tried to make some gil. But, I mean, to explain these recipes even more, we can go down here and you can see that not only do you need these, these top four items need to be crafted from these other items, as you can see, the pterodactyl, the sphalerite, royal mistletoe, and cloud cotton balls, items that are gotten from the diadem. Uh, this is probably going to be the harder part for a lot of people, as opposed to it being this super grindy part. Now, I will give a quick little thoughts. I do think it's a little bit over the top to need the grind and the crafted items. I think maybe too much was crammed into a single quest. But like I said, I'll elaborate more on that in a future quest. Let me show you a few of the NPCs in the game before we wrap things up. So first of all, if you want to hand in Poetics to get some of those items, all you have to do is come to Oriana in Mordona, go to Allegan Tomestones of Poetics under the other tab, and as you can see, the unidentifiable bone and shell will be here at the bottom. For the Law Tombstones, it's a similar situation. You go to Hismena over in Idleshire, and you'll also, under this, see Allegan Tombstones of Law Other. Same deal, except this time it's the unidentifiable ore and unidentifiable seeds. Now, while we're right here, the NPC next to his mana, Sabina, now has a new option called Precision Gordian Part Exchange. These are where you can exchange the items you get from Alexander Normal in order to get more unidentifiable bone shells, ores, and seeds. Remember, it's 10, item each. it's 10 items each, so 10 runs will net you one item. This is 10 A1s, 10 A2s, 10 A3s, and 10 A4s. No, you will not need 800 runs. Remember, you'll be getting 20 law from each of these runs. That's assuming you don't have a first-time bonus. Are there first-time bonuses? I don't know that. You'll get 20 law per run, though, so that will drastically reduce the number. I highly recommend getting A1 and A4 out of the way and buying your parts to A2 and A3 so you can reduce the number of runs that you have to do for those. As much as it pains me to come back here for an example, I also want to show you the Beast Tribe quests. Remember, only the rank 3 or higher quests for the Old World Beast Tribes will work, while any of the Vanu Vanu Beast Tribe quests will work and give you an option. So, I already have the quest, so I guess that was a bad way to start it. So upon taking the level 48 quests that you'll get from these Beast Tribes, you'll be given the choice after completing them of doing a venture or getting one of the new token items, in this case a Sylphic Gold Leaf, which you can then use to buy more ore, shells, and the other items. All you have to do is eventually take them to the vendor, which is not down here, so I don't know why I did it. We'll leave that little flub in the video. There we go. The Sylphic Vendor gold leaf exchange and all you have to do is exchange the gold leaf for unidentifiable seeds there's a bunch of other stuff here as well but just know that this is what you'll be looking at 13 of them for one quest so just keep that in mind it'll take you at least five days in order to get one of them but for every one of these seeds you get that's 10 less alexander normal runs you got to do or 680 less law that you got to get and the final NPC you'll be looking for, in case you happen to have any Allied Seals, is your good old Hunt Bill Master. Go to Allied Seals, Order of the Twin Adder, go to the other tab and scroll down. At the very bottom, you'll be able to find items to be able to trade for 1,000 Allied Seals. Although, if you recall, that is only going to work for the unidentifiable bone and seeds, as you see here. Now, again, I did mention that the Heavensward treasure maps have a low percentage chance of dropping these items as well. That includes the Archeo skin, the Wyvern skin, and the Dragon skin maps. So you're going to want to be gathering those maps in the new areas. Overall, it's going to take people a pretty long time to get this done. So I really, really recommend you don't go too ham, Netflix and chill, do it with some friends, and it'll probably go a whole lot faster and generate a lot better memories than if you were to just grind it all out in a 12-hour session. Wish I had taken my own advice. Anyway, uh, one final question to answer that I just remembered. This step you also don't have to do on the job you are doing the Anima Weapon for. I can do this step on any job that I want to. So if it's faster for me to get my poetics and laws by going tank, even though I'm working on a monk weapon, I can do that. Maybe this group needs a healer for Alexander Normal Runs. I am capable of doing that. As long as you have the quest active and you have the step with Christiana open, then you are good to go to start gathering the items you need. Anyway, thank you for watching this video covering the Anima Weapon questline. I know that there wasn't too many thoughts in this video, despite what I said at the beginning. 
it's coming. Don't you worry about that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all in the thoughts video. Until then, take care.